fireballs. Hopefully this one won't take too much actual tuning since we've already tuned it on 93, actually I already tuned it on ethanol just with compressed air. A boost controller didn't work last time so hopefully we're just dialing that in but we might have to tweak the fueling a little bit because it's a new fuel system. Yeah boy. Oh come on man. This is actually kind of embarrassing but got the truck all set up on the dyno just to realize that my charger for my laptop that lives in my book bag and never comes out somehow made its way out of my book bag so I had to break everything back down. Ordered another computer just to keep at the shop so that this never happens again. So tomorrow we'll go back for round two and the temperatures dropped like 60 degrees since then. I don't know what's going on. Got this set back up on the dyno again. Last time I had this on the dyno, I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Now I'm freezing to death and it's supposed to snow tonight. So it uh, looks like it could rain any minute. This has no hood or anything on it. So I'm gonna try and finish this up as quick as we can. All right, got it all warmed up. This has the FuelTech block style uh, boost solenoids on it and got all of our PID stuff set up with the car off. I don't suspect that this is gonna need a lot of tuning. Hopefully it's just a matter of turning the boost up. This is a new fuel system, new injectors, uh, tuned it on wastegate, all the part throttle, like all that stuff, we took care of it. And all the full throttle stuff was relatively close. All right, I'm gonna make a run with 10 pounds of dome pressure and see where we're at. seven pounds of dome pressure made a decent amount it made 730 horsepower already actually a little bit more than I was shooting for all right so let's see 195 kpa so what about 14 pounds I don't feel like changing the thing right yet um, all right I'm gonna get actually go backwards dump it down to 5 psi so probably do like 5 10 12 something like that fueling is actually not very good so that's interesting um, all right, let me investigate. Well, of course, there are a few bugs to work out. So that's actually extremely interesting, but I guess not surprising is the injector swap because it had inexpensive injectors in it previously. Now it has injector dynamics. And this thing just had a uh, really weird characteristics about it all together with the previous injectors. Uh, so I had a custom table that was active uh, based off of fuel pressure that was offsetting all of that and actually worked really good uh, but now that we have normal injectors uh, that table is apparently not needed anymore so we're just going to zero this out go back to five pounds of dome pressure yeah so we're at ten go to five and let's try it again all right 630 the graph looks great and we still need to add some fuel so that's okay but at least we're in the ballpark now not bad for five pounds of dumb pressure graph looks great I think one more at this boost level and then we should have the fueling straight then hopefully just got turned up a couple times the same because it didn't change anything all right same run just a little bit more fuel it's really weird I just threw a truckload of fuel at it and it didn't really care fuel pressure is fine. I've already made a few videos with this truck so 
kind of throwing this one into the mix of this video because the owner of the truck's son uh, at the racetrack asked me to make a video of it while it's here. So here we are. Got a hockey stick for you, Jameson. I'll throw it in the bed of your dad's truck. So this is not on the list of things I expected to happen today, but uh, even at 700 and whatever horsepower, we're already at 100% injector duty cycle. That's why I just added more fuel and nothing happened. We have more fuel pump than we have fuel injector. So I think we're gonna bump the pressure up just a little bit. I'd really like for it to make just 50 more horsepower and I'd be okay. I guess, to be completely honest, I'd be perfectly happy with the power it's making right now, as long as all of our fueling was in check, but it's not. So try a couple more pounds of fuel pressure. If that doesn't cut it, then it might just kind of be, is what it is. Now, if this works, then we basically get to start all over again on everything that we did today. But uh, before I bother changing anything, I'm just going to see if it goes really rich. All right, awesome. That just worked. That's going to do exactly what we need it to do. All right, good. So we went from <clears throat> over a hundred percent duty cycle to where the hell did it go? Oh, here it is. Uh, eighty percent duty cycle, and went from a uh, really high closed loop correction to uh, minus eighteen. So once we pull that eighteen percent out, uh, I think we'll be in good shape, and we should be able to bump it up, uh, bump the boost up just a touch. I don't really want to go over eighty eighty five percent. Um, and even though we're pretty close to that now, like I said, once we remove some fuel, we'll be in good shape. So this is promising. All right, to try and get our fueling back where I want it to be, uh, actually I actually had to change fueling in a custom, couple of custom tables and the main fuel table and in the system ICF uh, for the new fuel pressure. So this, I, I'm not expecting to be real close on this one. Actually not too bad. Still a little further away than I'd like. Uh, Alright, that's awesome. It's actually still uh, a negative correction so we can pull some more fuel out, which is exactly what I want. Found out you're better off having like 15 crappy cameras rather than one nice one. And then you can just like set up each camera in a single spot and you never have to move it again. So that's what this one's for. All right, hopefully this one's close and we can turn it up and that should theoretically take like one, one pull. We've obviously already done the timing and all that stuff. This is just fueling. Perfect. Oh, except my stupid ass forgot to log it. All right, I'm gonna try three pounds of dome pressure. That's probably all it has left in it fuel-wise. Uh, that's fine. And whatever, like I said, the power numbers it's making now are, are fine for what it is. And I think I'm going to build another custom table just for idle on ethanol because it's being a little bit goofy. Uh, in terms of getting all the trims and stuff correct, but once we give it, it literally any throttle and start moving, uh, everything is now I'm totally happy with. I was a little worried there for a few minutes. This will be 13 pounds of dome pressure and hopefully, I don't know, 15, 16 pounds of manifold pressure. It's so cold out, I haven't had to use the fan. It's actually having the exact opposite problem where each time I shut it off, it's struggling to get it up to temperature. All right, the number is dead nuts what I wanted it to be. Let's see what the duty cycle looks like. All right, I said uh, 15 or 16 pounds of manifold pressure and it's literally at 15.5 on the dot, so that's good. Uh, dome pressure's 13. Our injector duty cycle just touched 90% and I have my target air fuel uh, kind of extra rich, so I'm okay with that. And uh, the reality is, is this thing will probably basically never be driven uh, at, at this power level. And it made 
805, so just cleared 800. So it's a nice round number. And we're gonna call this good for the dyno. I still get to spend a little bit more time with this um, before I give it back to the owner, but I think we're gonna call this one good here.